Hey crafters, welcome to Paulette's Pretty Paper Crafts. It is time for April 2015 name tags. We're going with a spring theme this month. I've got my regular white cardstock cut down to two and a half by three and a quarter, which is what fits in my little name badges that came from Walmart Supercenter. We're going to use this beautiful watering can stamp. It's called Watering Can Flowers. It is a Stampabilities stamp. We're going to be stamping all of our images in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And we're going to color with some Copic markers. And I know we've done a lot of Copic coloring. Maybe I'll get around and next month we'll do some water coloring or something. I really need to do something with colored pencils, but I'm not a big colored pencil user, which probably is bad. I probably need to practice and, and do, do, other, do other stuff too. But I've had so much fun with my Copics since I got them. I'm not really paying attention to where these land on the card. We're going to end up stamping the month right in the center of the can anyway because I didn't really leave space for that when I designed this card. We're going to be using April from Months of the Year Wood Stamps. Now, I have had this stamp set for years, and I've been telling everybody it's from the Paper Studio, but look, it also says Stampabilities, so maybe they're the same company. I am going to use some Post-it Note tape and mask off the I and the L, because that's just easier than trying to selectively only stamp the APR. On some of the months, you can do that, but some of them, the letters are tucked really close together. So I find that masking just, just works better in the end, and it's less of, a, less of a headache. I can just keep crafting. I don't have to, you know, get mad and stop and whatnot. So I'm going to use this little butterfly. He is actually from Mimi in Paris, and when I designed this card, I had a boo-boo. So, nine times out of ten, if you see a bug or a bird on my card, it's because I had a boo-boo and I had to disguise it. For the sentiment, I'm going to use this really pretty, scripty sentiment that says, Happy Easter. It's from Stampin' Up's Well Scripted. And it is going to stamp across the flowers a little bit, but I, I thought that was okay. I thought about trying to tilt it and tuck it in here, but I just didn't like that. I don't know if it's because it's the Easter holiday. I felt like it just, it just needed to be head on. And then I've got to leave name or room for us to write our names. So there's all our stamping. Oh, it is not. We still got to stamp our little chicks. This is a $1 stamp that came out of the Michaels $1 bin. And it is a Hampton Art 2009 Hut Fudge Studio for Studio G. And we're going to stamp this little chick on the right. And so I am going to mask off the chick right next to him and just try to ink that one chick and we'll just tuck him in right here underneath the watering can There we go. That's all our stamping. And we're going to do some kind of fast Copic coloring. We're not going to worry about being perfect, and we're just going to get the colors on there. 
Okay, here's what we're going to use. Y26, B with four zeros. I've got the colorless blender pen because my Celestine Blue is really getting low. V09, BV13, B18, YG25, YR68, R12, and did I say B12 already? YG06, G07, Y32, and Y18. Let's start with our little chick first. And I'm actually going to be using these four colors on the chick. We're going to start with these two yellows, this really pale cashmere yellow first. And we're just going to throw that color on him. Just like that. And then we're going to take this Y18 and I'm going to do a little swoosh over his head and a little swoosh under his belly. And then I'm going to come back and do two swooshes right where his wing would be. And then I'm going to go back in with this paler yellow and just fill in this area that just doesn't look like it has much ink. And back here on the tail, just and that's just all going to blend together and be wonderful. We're going to let him dry before we use these other two colors. So let's move along to something else. Let's go ahead and start on our watering can. We're going to use the dark blue the mid-tone blue, and this really interesting green. So that's the B18, B12, and YG25. We're going to start with the dark blue. And let me clean off the stamp, and I'll show you. I just love this stamp so, so much. And I'll lay it up here for a little bit. The artwork that the artist has already put on there just makes my heart sing. It, it's why I bought the stamp. And so I am going to use that as inspiration for my coloring. So I'll just give you a close-up of that. Since I've already done that and there are quite a few colors on there, I'm going to go ahead and use my tag because I've already figured out where I want all those colors. So we're going to put that deep swoosh of blue right down here on the bottom. And there are some other places here where there's a little bit of shadow. And I'm just going to go ahead and dab those in. And when I'm doing this, I really work assembly line. So I will do three cards at a time and just do that, do that each of those little sections, and get... Get that on there where I want it, and then move on to the next color. So I'm going to move on to this next blue. And the cool thing about the alcohol markers is the next lighter color will fade out that dark color that you just put down. So I'm just going to put that ink just on top of that and let it start working its magic. And then I'm going to come back in here and put this blue everywhere that I want it. A little dash here, a little dash there. I've already figured these out. And once you get going, it really, it really goes along quite nicely. If you do them assembly line. And some right there, I missed that part. And now I'm going to take that really interesting green, YG25, and just kind of fill in some of these areas. 
that don't have any color. And again, if I just kind of go from card to card, there's a little bit of green right in there. And then I'm just going to start swooshing it in where I did on my original card. That looks good. And the pale celestine blue is what I would blend all this with, but my marker has gotten so dry while I was creating my videos. So I'm going to end up using the colorless blender pen. But you would normally use this pale celestine blue. But my marker has, well, it looks like maybe it revived a little bit after I laid it down. Let's go ahead and use it on one of these and see how far we can get. We're just swooshing that and just letting that blend. I'm dragging it along those long areas. And I do not care if it bleeds to the outside. It is that wonderful pale color that a lot of people use for a kind of a shadow anyway. And if it just bleeds to the outside, it just makes it look a bit like watercolor. And I love watercolor, so that is perfectly fine with me. It looks like it was still working a little bit. It is fading, so so that that is good. I'm going to have to buy that refill just pretty quick here. All right, let's go and do our little butterfly. I'm going to use this dark purple and this mid-tone purple and then this kind of medium blue. So I'm going to start with this medium purple and just fill in kind of the center area of the wings. And nothing too neat, just throw it on there. Now I'm going to take the dark purple and go from the center of the body up into that mid-tone purple a little bit there. And then we're going to take that blue and do the tips and pull it down into the other two purples. Because again, those lighter colors will blend and fade out those other colors. Okay. Let's go back and work on our chick a little bit. I do have this Y26 and YR28. And let's see, the R12. We're going to do the cheek with the R12. So let's go ahead and draw on our wing with the Y26. Just one little swoosh for the wing and a couple of dash marks behind that for feathers. We're going to put in a little orange beak. And I'm going to put orange on the legs and a couple of dashes for the feet. And then we're going to use this R12 for a little cheek. And it's a very subtle cheek, but I still like it. Let's go ahead and put the yellow. I've got the bright yellow and the orange. We're going to finish out the watering can. The spout is yellow here. And just a little bit of orange right here in the corner of that to enhance that. It's kind of in a V shape. And let's go ahead and do our flowers. We're going to use 
the dark blue, the dark purple, and the medium blue. We're going to start with the purple. And I am going to just squiggle this color into the flowers. And I'll show you a little example of that on this post-it tape. Because these are kind of like a lilac image and I am just laying the marker down and squiggling along those flowers. For me, personally, the faster, the better. You know, if I think about it too much, then, then I'm in trouble. All right, I'm going to put a dot above that, all around the sides, down one side and up the other. And the faster I go, the less painful it is, so... Just dotting. And then I'm going to take this blue and I am going to squiggle, start at the top and squiggle down over that whole thing. And the more that kind of gets out to the sides of that darker area, the better. So I'm going to go back in and dot in a little bit more of that after I've squiggled if it didn't get where I wanted it to really be. Just go ahead and toss some more in there. Just kind of creates some shadows and makes that look a little bit fuller than what it is. Now we can color the greenery that is inside the can. And I'm going to use this dark green and not that green. Yes, that green. <laughs> YG06 and YG07. We're going to start with the light green. Well, it's a medium tone green. And I'm going to tilt these this way because it's easier for me to push the pin away from me than it is to pull it towards me. So I'm just going to swoosh along all of the stems and leaves there. And not really being too careful on those front ones, you kind of have to be a little careful. But on the rest of that, you can just see how quick. And then on these two leaves that are kind of hanging out, you kind of have to be careful too. And then I'm going to take this dark green and just fill in here kind of the bottom areas just to give that a little bit of depth and behind the handle there I'm sticking to the tag and then we're going to use this color to also draw in our grass so we're going to do a couple sprigs Just like that. And the more you practice with grass, the better it gets. But I'm not a really big fan of wasting my markers. Um, so I'm going to do one, one sprig up through the middle of that. And then one from each side. And then two little sprigs here. Same thing over here. And then a couple behind the chick. And same thing on this one. And if that I didn't like the way I didn't that didn't get tall enough, I'm going to do it again and pull it up a little bit taller. And I didn't really like that either. So there we go. So pretty cute, very springy. I hope you guys had a lovely Easter. If you have any questions, be sure and let me know.